Hello! Today I'm going to be looking at the Derwent Ink Tents pencils, the Ink Tents blocks, and I'm going to do an artwork on the Ink Tents paper. Alright, so let's take a look at both tins. Now, they are exactly the same colour numbers inside. They come in a set of 72 is the maximum, and they also have smaller sets like a 12, I think a 24 or 36, maybe a 48, I'm not too sure. I'm going to put up some information by Derwent in the description below so you can check that out and let's just open the tins and have a look and see what the difference is. Here we go they're so pretty. Now I've really only used these a tiny little bit so I still haven't pulled them out properly to look at them I'm actually doing that today and the pencils are in the matching colors so let's just grab one we'll take the first one out of here Oh wow, this has got such a soft waxy feel to it. It's so smooth and it's got almost slightly damp. It's kind of a really strange sensation and the matching pencil. So this is Sherbet Lemon and it is 0100. On here it's very hard to see. Of course I picked a difficult color, but that also says 0100. The ink tents blocks do not have the names of the colors on there, but they do have the numbers. So this is the same color as you can see. Okay, so here's another couple. I've got Deep Blue 850 and on the bar, hopefully you can see that, it says 850. So they're in the same order and they are matching colors. There are two trays of the pencils, like that, and there are two trays like this. Look, I've still got the cardboard in this one. I literally have not opened this properly. There we go. Okay, I just found something really interesting. There is one difference between these two sets. In the pencils, the 72nd one is an outliner, number 2400, and I'm assuming this is a water-soluble graphite. I've just got a bit of paper here. I've never used this. I put it in a different container and I just completely forgot it was there. But that is definitely a graphite pencil. And I'll just get some water which I have right here. No, it's not. The pencil in here is not water soluble. There's a tiny bit that's come off but that is not budging. So that is just a dark liner pencil. It's most odd. And so I went through all of the blocks because there is not that same number in here. It goes up to the white and then I'm going, well, there's 72 blocks in here. So are there doubles of something? But no, I found one that is in here that is not in here. And that is 1215, which I had to actually look up because it's got no name on here. According to Jackson's Art Supplies, 1215 is turquoise and turquoise is not in the pencil set. You've got dark aquamarine and green aquamarine, which is 1210 and 1220, these two, but in the middle is a 1215 on the blocks and it is a turquoise. And I did not know that until literally just now when I was getting confused as to why that one's got 71 plus a liner pencil and this has got 72 colors. Ah, I hope we've all learned something new here today. So what exactly are ink tents, pencils and blocks? You probably already know they've been out for a very long time, but just in case you're new to these products, they're like a watercolour pencil, but they are made of solid ink instead, and it's very much like an India ink once they become wet. So it's a very interesting formulation. If you know anything about India ink, it is soluble when it's wet. But once it's dried, it becomes permanent and you cannot move it with water. And this happens with these pencils. If I just grab a piece of paper, I'll go for this bright blue here. It is called Iris Blue. In their solid form, they work just like a regular colored pencil. Get a little bit of water. Once you wet it, that just dissolves out completely. And it works exactly like any other watercolor pencil, but once it's dry, that is not going to lift. So I will just let that dry and we can see that in a bit. So here's a Derwent watercolor pencil in a similar color. Let's just compare that. So I'll just put this side by side. Works in exactly the same way. Once you wet it with water, it will dissolve out. 
I'm just using very cheap watercolor paper here for the moment, but it will do for the purposes of this demonstration. So I will let those dry. Now, when I get the ink tense block, I'm just going to color it on dry as well for, well, that comes out a lot more thickly. That works in exactly the same way. Now, why would you then get the ink tense blocks over the pencils or the pencils over the ink tense blocks? Well, really, they are designed to work together. And when you've got a block like this, they are designed to really cover a lot of area in one go. So, I mean, you could use that whole thing and color in a large area in one hit. You could use the edge of it or the corner for something that's a little bit more detailed, but the pencils, of course, will give you a lot more detail than the ink tense blocks. Now, other ways you can use the blocks, instead of just laying the dry color onto the paper, because if you notice when you put down any kind of water soluble pencil, it usually does leave a tiny little bit of texture from the pencil. So with the ink tense blocks, you can actually just use them like a watercolor stick. So I could just paint straight onto the block and straight onto the paper like that and it eliminates any of that pencil texture that you get. These also create texture when they're dry as well but they re-wet so amazingly well. They're fabulous, I really like them. So that is one way you can use the ink tense blocks and I'll just let that sit and dry. You can see that that's quite damp. When I bought the paper, I got this for free. It's called a shave and save and it's supposed to be designed for the ink tense blocks, I'm pretty sure. So let's just get a different color. Ah, oh, so many to pick from. <laughs> they are a little bit difficult to prize out and as you can see, my fingers are getting very stained. But you can use this to just shave a little bit of powder I'm assuming like this somehow <laughs> I've never used this before this is my first time that makes a terrible sound all right I've shaved a tiny bit off the edge there I mean this is obviously only going to hold one but if you had a whole bunch of these pots you could fill this with water because it does have a, an airtight lid on top and you could actually make some ink washes or like a paint so if I just add a tiny bit of water I've got a spray bottle here Let's just see. Yeah, see, I've only put a tiny bit in just for demonstration purposes, but when you mix that up, it then becomes a paint or ink-like consistency, and you can use it just like that. And depending on how much you shave into there will be how strong or diluted the color will be. So really great if you just want to do a wash, and you can see that the two colors there blend in really well together. So these, to me feel more like India ink than they do watercolors. As you can see, this bit is dried and now that's going over the top. So once it's dried, it's not going to lift off that paper and you can layer different colors over the top of each other. So the ink tents, pencils and blocks are really wonderful for layering. The pencils are much easier to use, I think just in general. I'm so used to using pencils so for me this is a lot easier and they're cleaner because you're not touching it. I mean you can also do a similar thing where you touch the paintbrush to the tip of the pencil and it will paint the ink on there. So these work just as well. It's really just personal preference but I thought I might as well get both because I found that when I was doing a larger picture with the pencils that the background just took forever and I think the intense blocks would be really great. You can also use the pencil wet like that, but you do have to make sure you blend that out really quickly. As you can see when you do that, it leaves a lot more lines. So I tend not to use that technique myself. It's not something I'm a big fan of. Well, I was talking there and I forgot to hit record, so I'm just going to redo this again. Now, I just did a little demonstration where I lifted some of the watercolor pencil and the ink tents stay the same, but I'll just do that over here. You might see a tiny bit coming off the brush, but that is because there's a little bit that's still wet. But you can see that that edge is not moving. Whereas, if I do the watercolor pencil, I can scrub that off pretty easily. So watercolor pencils are really great for lifting and ink tense pencils are really great for layering. But you can use the two together really easily. They work perfectly well because they all dissolve in water. Just do remember that these ones won't budge once they're down. <laughs> and 
the Intense range, they are very bright colours. They live up to their name. They're very intense colours. Not so much when they're dry. They look kind of dull. But when you add the water to them, they just explode with colour and they're absolutely stunning. They have an amazing range of these blues and purples and quite a lot of greens not so much in the earth color range so if you're really into your earth colors this is a little bit limited with the amount that they have but for someone like me who loves really bright colors this set is awesome the only problem that it has is that a lot of them are not considered to be light fast and you do need to be aware of that if you are wanting to do an artwork that you want to sell and you're very concerned about it being highly light fast you do need to go through and make sure you're only using the pencils that are light fast there is a really good chart on Derwent's page which has all of this information they all have ratings on there they are not on the pencils all that's on the pencil is the name and the number and the salient information about it there's nothing else on there but you can easily find that information online but today I'm not even worried about that I just want to use them all because they're just so darn pretty <laughs> all right I'm going to get into some swatching okay, here they all are on the one page and I've also added in that extra block which is the turquoise that does not go in with the pencils what I'll do is one side I'll put the pencil the other side I'll put the block and then I will paint them and we will see what they look like okay they're all swatched out the ink tents blocks make so much more mess than the pencils you can see there's dust everywhere they're very crumbly and they are so much like other pastels but my hands are filthy this is like printed paper it's really thin I've not used water on it so I have no idea what's going to happen here it could be a total mess but fingers crossed it's at least going to show us enough of what the colors look like and in answer to many questions I've received no this book does not take water at all what a mess and the whole thing was a bit of a disaster so um here's some music yeehaw Alright, so aside from the horrible texture that the water is creating, you can see that both the pencil and its block are identical, which is really great. So no problems there. They were correct in saying that they are all matching colours. And they are very bright indeed, as we can see here. They look so much better once they are watered out. The pencils themselves, when they're dry, look a bit dull, but when you add that water they just come really beautifully alive. And look at, there's that turquoise, it's so pretty. these are mostly dry my tip is if you've ended up with this book is use as little amount of water on the brush as you can I used the tissue here to blot the brush before I painted them and that helped a bit but if I flip it over you can probably see how there's indentations from the water going through and buckling that paper really severely but thankfully the publishers of this book have been smart enough to leave a blank page on the back of the swatch page so at least you don't have to try and swatch on the other side of the paper which would be a total disaster so it's not great for water soluble media I'm not too sure about ink but I will have to test some of those at a future time they are not maybe as bright as they would be on watercolor paper but it's okay I get an idea of what the colors look like and it's handy having them in the book that I can just flip to the page when I'm trying to decide on colors and pick something out of here because when the pencils are dry they don't look the same as when they've actually been diluted so it's really useful to have a chart to get a total idea of what the colors are going to look like that turquoise is really pretty and I wish that came in a pencil I don't think it does let me know if it does because I will definitely go out and see if I can find it you can see I've got ink all under my nails here what a mess it's a fun color palette as you can see 
they're all pretty much really vibrant, bright, intense colours. Not really the pastel side of things, but if you wanted more pastel tones, you could use the blocks and water them down in a separate palette and create those much lighter tones of the colours. So there is a range there, it's just that you want to be doing that on a separate palette rather than doing that straight on the paper because you will get these really bright colours straight off. Okay, I'm going to do an artwork now and I've got this ink tense pad designed for ink tense pencils and the blocks and also the little palette. This is the 7x10, it's 100% cotton, it's cold pressed. This is a very rough surface. If you saw my previous video where I reviewed the paper for the Lightfast and the ink tense, you'll see how much rougher this paper is than the Lightfast paper, which is a lot smoother, and that's hot press. But the cold press texture is much stronger. You can see I've drawn already on here. I think the paper's pretty much the same on both sides with for texture. Okay, so I'm going to get into the painting and the drawing and we'll see what I end up with. Alrighty, so I started off with the ink tense blocks and I used them like watercolour paint. So I painted onto the block and then put it in the palette and used it like that. It's so much easier. And this made for a really good underpainting because that paper is just so coarse and when you use a pencil it just leaves all sorts of white marks and it's not much fun so this way I was able to get right into the tooth of the paper with the wet media and really this paper is designed for watercolor it's not designed for pencils I have come to that conclusion that I much prefer using it with a water soluble medium like this in its wet form rather than the pencils I did use the pencils a bit later in this though to go over and make everything darker also to get more detail because those are much easier the blocks were very messy and acted a lot like pastels in that respect in that I got more of it on my hands than anywhere else so here I go in with the pencils adding on layers and I waited of course for that background to dry before I did this because otherwise the pencil would just stick into it and not budge as well and that would have made such a mess but you can see the Inktense pencils are so beautifully dark and those purples and blues are just really gorgeous so I love the colors in this set I'm just not keen on this paper I would much rather use a hot press paper with the pencils and so I imagine that the light fast paper would work just as well for the ink tense pencils as it does for the light fast pencils so if I was to pick more paper again I would only choose the light fast I would not get another ink tense block mainly because there are so many other brands of cold press paper out there which work just as well and are much cheaper. The good thing about the textured paper though is it will just take layers for days and I obviously had some restraints with time here as I need to get this video out so I could have spent a lot longer on this and done layers and layers and layers so it does give you that ability to do so and I can't fault it there but it just is not very nice to work on it's such a pain and I don't like really textured things. I much prefer smooth paper for pencils. But anyway, I'll let you watch the rest of this and I'll come in at the end once I finish this drawing. Or is it a painting? I guess you could say it's an inking. <laughs>
so here's my finished artwork and I completely forgot to record a conclusion for this video and I've gone and tidied everything away so I'm just really going to quickly say thank you all so much for watching the conclusion I come to is that I really love both the intense pencils and the blocks but I do prefer the pencils just because they are less messy the blocks are lovely to use as watercolor paints but they are a bit more difficult when using dry and also the ink tense paper while it's really really good for wet media it's not good for pencils it drove me crazy and I didn't like it very much so that is my conclusion for that I would use it again but it's just a bit more difficult and frustrating to use not great if you're impatient like I am so don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and I will see you all again really soon in my next video. Swatch you later. Bye!